it's thinking. Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Caroline Corey. I am the writer, director, producer, host <laughs> of the film, Superhuman, The Invisible Made Visible. I'm here with my very, very dear friend, Naomi Grossman, who's an incredible actress. And I can't believe she said yes to my documentary film. Oh. Uh, I love you to death. Um, and so we're here together because I would like to ask you a few questions. How was your experience uh, making the film? Um, also the subject of, we're talking about consciousness and the mind, the power of the mind. What attracted you to, to this type of topic? So thanks for being with me today. And, and please, uh, so, when you heard about the project, uh, first of all, it's a documentary. Now, Naomi's super famous for um, many films, including American Horror Story and um, and Control, Alternate Delete, a bunch of stuff. I mean, and so this was a documentary project. So what made you say yes? Well, it's true. I do have real a real aversion to reality television. Anything, you know, I don't want to be myself. Um, I, I just want to disappear behind prosthetics, uh, you know, as a character. And so it, you really have to twist my arm to, you know, uh, uh, to be me, to be myself. Um, but I am very passionate about this, this uh, subject, actually. I, um, even before I met you, I, I was a big believer in um, the power of the mind and um, consciousness. And so, um, yeah, I think it's one of the most powerful tools we have uh, and aren't using enough. So um, I, uh, this wasn't a hard sell. <laughs> well, I remember when you came on set um, and there was no lines for you. <laughs> and it's, and uh, we started, so we basically walked through what you were going to do. Um, mm -hmm. We had done a pre-rehearsal sort of thing, conversation, but on set, with all the cameras and you know all the equipment and all this, this the devices and things like that and then uh you i remember it or you, that was your reaction you were like wait i don't have lines i just have to be myself <laughs> this isn't yeah. as easy but so as an actress how do you compare like is it comfortable for you knowing what you're supposed to say, what your marks are and things like that, as opposed to just being you? How, how does that change for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I guess I, I have this idea in my head that, you know, when you watch reality television, it's like the bigger train wreck, the better, you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the, the drunker the girl is on the date, the more obnoxious they are at the club, you know, that that's good television. And I'm not trying to be, be good television like that. You know, uh, if I'm going to be uh, like acting the fool, I want to have it scripted. Um, so um, I, I guess there is a certain amount of like vulnerability, letting yourself just be seen and um and you know if you're a fool they're gonna you're they're gonna see that I mean the camera never lies so um I think maybe that's I think this is actually a conversation for my therapist uh, <laughs> but, um, you know I, I think I, I I do tend to be a little bit of a, a control freak and um and having the camera on you like I said, without the, the without prosthetics, without any sort of you know ruse, you're um, you're you're vulnerable. They're gonna see what's real. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this wasn't reality TV. This was a serious documentary, no, of um, course, you know, scientific documentary. But still, to your point, uh, when you don't have uh, any lines and you just have to kind of be yourself and especially what we were doing we were doing an experiment right so so that's another thing in the film you guys 
um, we ran actual experiments with no rehearsal. I mean, that was the point, is to show how consciousness works. Um, right. And uh, that particular scene with you was to demonstrate how your mind can be so spot on, like accurate. And I was blown away. I mean, so blown away. In fact, we couldn't control our reaction if you notice watching the film because it was so real. Like you would think of something and then it would trigger that reaction. So um, now tell me in your real life experience, how do you use, because I know you do yoga. Guys, mm -hmm. she's like incredible at yoga. She does all these like, like amazing positions. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, incredible. So I know you do yoga, but do you do something that's specific for your mind, training your mind to be so incredibly accurate? Well, I do think yoga is part, I mean, obviously a lot of it's physical, but there is a whole uh, psychological and spiritual aspect as well. And um, I, I think it's very important to have that, you know, hour and a half this morning, it was two, uh, to simply like just empty your mind and you're doing nothing but just following those instructions. So literally all you have to do is breathe or extend your arms or wrap your leg around your head or whatever the instruction is. But there's there's a lot to that because let's face it, especially nowadays, we've got, you know, your device is doing this and your uh, lover's doing that and the television, and the, you know, Donald Trump's doing this. And, you know, there's so much stimulated at all times that to really just turn it all off and be completely like within yourself is um, is really a skill. I, I actually brought a friend to class uh, to this morning. I, I don't go a day without yoga. Um, and uh, even he said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I was kind of, I wasn't so good today. I kind of went half mass. And I was like, are you kidding? I didn't even notice you in the room. Like, it's <laughs> literally like I am in my own little world. Like, like Naomi has left the building <laughs> when I've done yoga. So, um, so uh, I, I think really just uh, settling your mind is, is, and that's for me, it's yoga, but whatever that is for you, I think that's very important. I was, we've okay. talked about it when I've, um, you know, I've, I've confided about it with you about my own struggles, um, you know, with concentration. And I, I happen to um, really suffer from anxiety auditioning, which is crazy because that's sort of my job. And um, it's really hard to, to do this if you're going to, you know, can't even audition. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and you've talked to me about, you know, that uh, your mind and how truly powerful that is. And if I can just, you know, turn it around instead of being, you know, nervous, uh, instead of thinking like, oh God, doom and gloom, here I go to my, you know, death. Instead think of it as like, oh wow, I get to audition today. I get to be someone else. I get to put on like a, a, a new costume and, and take on a new point of view. And, and that really, it, it changes everything. It's all about our mind and, and the way we choose to perceive things. And that's something I've got to say, Caroline, you have, oh, praise. I mean, it, it, it's been especially important right now during COVID because when this start, when this all went down, I am telling you, I did not know what to think. Like, I, I really felt like I was like the like I'm an extreme extrovert. I'm uh, live alone, um, uh, technophobic, um, uh, <laughs> uh, ju news junkie. It was like I was this like perfect storm for someone who is like really not going to do well in this. And and I didn't for a, a, a several weeks. I really just um, it was it was kind of uh, 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 it, it was doom and gloom. And I really had to check myself and go, wait a minute. 
um, you know, it's not the end of the world. It feels like it. it it's been a weird, dark week, but this isn't the apocalypse. So I really <laughs> had to kind of, you know, check myself. It's, it's hard. You know, I feel like when we're around people, especially me, I'm, I am so social that I really feed off of people. And so when I have other people around me to say, oh, buck up, you're fine. Like, it's good. I, I tend to go, oh, yeah, 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 they're right. But if I don't have that sort of stimulus, people around me to kind of uh, lift me up and remind me it's not the end of the world, it, it's... I tend to kind of go there. And I think that's what so much of your movie is about is con controlling the thoughts that you allow in your, in your mind, because they really, they're not just in their, your mind. They, they manifest through our entire bodies. Exactly. No, <laughs> absolutely. Me. I was going to ask you. Uh, <clears throat> you okay? Do you need water? <clears throat> You're good? I don't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say. I just got excited. <laughs> drink, drink water while while she's drinking water. Uh, I was just going to ask you how um, how you're dealing with this whole COVID thing, oh. and exactly you kind of uh, you read my mind. <laughs> and, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was just going to say it's like, hard to get away from <laughs> because you you know um, you know and how using your mind has helped you get through everything that we're all going through. I mean, um, because it's all in your head. So if you are thinking and feeling and believing that it is the end of the world, then that is the experience you're going to have. And if you're saying, okay, yeah. that's weird. That's like bizarre, whatever's happening, but how do I get through it? Then you bring it back to that control of the mind, like you said. Because you guys, I mean, also in your career, yeah. I mean, it's nerve wracking that, you know, with the auditioning and the, like, you're always on the spot. So this, the power, like the concentration of the mind is, must be like so crucial. So I feel like, you know, with your yoga training, but also what we did in this film, um, you know, kind of, and also a lot of the work, you know, you and I have done. Naomi is, is my dear friend. So we've also talked about many things outside the film, all kinds of stuff, relationship, guys, you name it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and I'm always impressed how quickly you shift. I mean, you blow me away. And so, and by the way, for the folks who are just arriving uh, we are talking about uh, the documentary film Superhuman, The Invisible Made Visible, just came out. We're doing really well. We're already on the in the top documentaries on iTunes, so yay. And um, Naomi Grossman is in the film and did uh, one of these uh, those experiments that we have in the film and so that demonstrate the power of the mind. So I want to talk a little bit about that specific experiment. So in that experiment, you guys, uh, because in the film, we have different kinds of experiment to measure the frequency of the voice, you know, um, all kinds of how you can, you know, do remote viewing uh, scientifically, how you can uh, change the pH in water with your mind. Um, you know, we have telekinetic moving objects. I mean, the documentary is insane, right? With us, the, the it is insane, <laughs> and and um, it's so exciting. I it's so exciting to watch. I was gonna say what, like what? Uh, just how powerful we are. Like that's it. That's empowering to me is to go. Oh wow, I've got this massive tool on the top of my head, and I just have to use it. <laughs> on you the know. top of my head, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. You crack me up. But yeah, so what what did you like the most about the film? Because you you are in it, but you also watched it, like you know, seeing us go from one experiment to another. What impressed you the most, and what did you take away, even afterwards, as a viewer? I feel like the kids reading was the most shocking to me. It was just like, okay, I, they're pulling my leg. Like I, I couldn't, that just didn't even seem possible. 
Um, uh, yeah, the the water. I, I'd I'd forgotten about the water. Um, I, I um, it's the, the I mean all of it. But and yet it shouldn't really shock me. I mean, I've because like I said, I've been kind of a believer long before even knowing you. I uh, I really feel like anything that I've really wanted. I've seen before it ever happened. Mm. Like I, ah. I remember, I remember one day um, I was uh, in the Groundlings, which is um, a comedy theater, and um, I, there's basically various levels of classes that you go through, and and you get, you know, eventually you ideally make the Sunday Company, which I did, and then uh, potentially the main company, which I didn't, but. In any case, I remember one of one of my big shows before the um, uh, a Sunday Company. Uh, I remember one of my best friends coming over, and um, I mean it was the night of the show, and I was you know nervous and going through my lines and whatnot. And and he's like, mm, "How do you feel? Are you nervous? Are you excited?" And I was like, "Yeah, but like I already see my picture on the wall. Like I literally close my eyes and I I see." already my headshot belongs up just like everybody else's like it's it and he's like well half of it's done then like you just gotta go there like you just gotta like show up tonight because the real work is done wow and i think that's really true yeah, yeah. anything it i've um you know really wanted i mean i i remember even like being so specific is like what I want, like in a car, I'd be like, I want, you know, down to the color, down to the mileage, down to what I wanted to pay, you name it. And I got it just because yeah. I, I knew what I wanted and I, I made it happen. That's incredible. Um, and also, by the way, you guys, uh, you can, uh, we have Michael with us who's monitoring questions for Naomi. You're getting all kinds of love notes. We love you. I just love her. I just love her. Oh. Hermosa Naomi. So, and uh, uh. this crowd is from all <laughs> over the world, actually. Yeah. Uh, the Netherlands, France, all kinds of the UK. <sighs> And uh, Naomi's super wow. beautiful. So just FYI. So if you're just joining, uh, you're welcome to type in questions uh, for Naomi and then Michael will facilitate that for us. But I want to show that clip of you for people to just okay. kind of see what you what what you did. Uh, so so just uh, to as an FYI, like how we did that particular scene for Naomi, the experiment that we did with you, um, we chose a device that would track uh, how your mind was operating. And it was real time. So didn't have time to fake <laughs> or prepare. And so what this machine did is it showed us in color because we did it in different ways. But this particular time, um, when, the, when you were all over the place and stressing out and your mind was chaotic, it would show a red color. And as soon as you focused and you calmed down, it went to a blue color. So I just want you guys mm -hmm. to just see that clip and see how incredibly quick she was, but check it out. I think this will be fun. So let me see, I'm gonna yeah. mute myself and share screen, I'll be right back.
Did that work? Did you guys see the clip? I didn't see anything. I mean, it looked like it kind of froze for me, but I don't know. If no, but uh, oh, they couldn't hear. There's no sound. Let me try it again. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, darling. Mm -hmm. go ahead and try to calm down and reach a state of peace. I really love the one-to-one -one real time relationship here. It's amazing. So did I it go was red, red and then did I go blue? Oh yeah. Absolutely. I I've spent plenty of time going red yeah. in my mind. Whereas going blue, you know, I have less experience with that. And it was fun. It I enjoyed like going to Jamaica and like <laughs> feeling the sun on my skin. It, right did it work that was yeah <laughs> that was great yeah awesome sorry about that uh you know all this technical stuff uh anyway it's um did you see you guys how quickly it was like it was red and then it just like was blue just instantaneously that was insane and just for you to know like we did several of those experiments like it was so accurate like me and colin we were like, wow, you know, we could barely control our reaction, how how incredibly powerful that was. Well, I, I do think, you know, this is what actors do, right? We we trick ourselves into thinking, you know, oh, the house is on fire or, you know, grandma died or, you know, whatever, like whatever our circumstances, like, oh, I'm living in of uh, 17th century England. Like uh, we we literally play make believe for a living. So for you to say, now you're in Jamaica, feel the sun on your skin. Like I, it's like, oh, oh I just got a little warmer inside, you know? So uh, it's true. Like I, I do have experience with this. This is something that I, um, I, uh, I've made a living at <laughs> sort of, um, uh, going there in my mind. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, you know, it was picking up your emotions that were changing your brain patterns. That's what the mm. device was. So this tells us that when we are angry or frustrated or whatever, we're literally, our brain waves are, are changing. But what I like about this experiment is that you could see it. I mean, that's the point of this film is to demonstrate how this is real. It's not in your head. Like, cause you know, we hear so much, oh, your mind affects your body, affects your reality, blah, blah. But we, we kind of like, it's a concept. It's an abstract concept out there. But when you mm -hmm. see, oh my God, like this is triggering a frequency that is real. That was um, the point of this experiment, which you were like the best candidate to have ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. Because you, you blew us away. And you guys don't forget, like, so we're shooting a film. So we're on set, there's cameras, there's cable everywhere. There's... Um, people watching so it's like you're also uh there's no rehearsal so it's almost like speaking of performance we can't you know i mean of course we can always edit and cut back but in terms of having to quiet your mind when there's all these people watching when there's camera rolling when there's all the electromagnetism you know that's also very important to to take into consideration mm -hmm. so amazing awesome so uh yeah. 
so can I show another quick clip now that I know how it works? <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, she was incredible. And you guys, if you have questions for Naomi, uh, go ahead and type them in and then we'll uh, we'll do those questions right after because I got to show this other clip because it's so important. Another thing also is your reaction, your natural ability to talk about this because it's you. That's the mm -hmm. thing. It, it's, it's who you are. So um, I thought it was great. So I'm going to show you this one. Okay. what i uh i turned it off <laughs> but okay, i was gonna say i didn't see anything just yeah now. yeah no no because i i had two clips and one of them disappeared so it will take me a bit oh. to bring it back so but we'll play it after this is over i just want to see does anybody have any questions for naomi um uh being on set being part of a project like this um and what like if you were able to take something from it moving forward in your career, would you do it again? You know, stuff like that. So, because the topic is about consciousness, the topic is about what you can do with consciousness. Um, so, so does anybody have any questions, Michael, please let us know if, yeah, uh, So fun. Uh, I'm going to try to pull that other clip because she's incredible in it. Uh, while I do that, Naomi, is there something you'd like to say more about your experience in the film, what the film has done you know, for you or what it can do for others? What do you feel your message is uh, for the folks who are listening and potentially um, hopefully watching the film? Well, uh, I think the the film is such a good reminder um, of, like I said, being really careful about what we let in our brain. <laughs> um, because the fact is, especially right now, where we're living in such a kind of contentious time, you know, uh, the, the news is often very dramatic and uh, people have role, uh, you know, diverse opinions about it. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's important that we're, like I know for me, again that week of um, when when the riots were happening in LA, for example, and literally there, you know, there's like a protest happening a block away, and of course, like at that point, there hadn't been a single protest that hadn't turned, you know, violent at night. And here I am, like, ah, they're coming for me, but they're not coming for me, like. Again, it's what you allow in. So um, I, I, I just think it, it's it's very important right now. Like if all you want to see is, you know, the looting and the fires and the destruction, then that's what you're going to see. Like we often like we get what we want. Like I wanted to be in the Groundling Sunday Company. I saw the picture on the wall and lo and behold, my picture went on the wall. Uh, you know, I wanted a green Mazda Miata with a, a convertible with less than 100,000 miles for $7,000 and I got it. Like, I think what I'm saying is like, we're very powerful. And so, um, you know, that said, don't squander this thing you have up like you know use it use it to your better you know your a greater good <laughs> you know because if you want to just 
go down that rabbit hole of, you know, doom and gloom and, oh my God, we're all going to die and <laughs> the city's on fire, then that's a pretty easy, that's an easy place to go if you'll let yourself, but don't. It's, it's much more difficult to, um, to, to, uh, to focus your mind and, and concentrate on, on what's good and what's real. I think that's really what's, uh, that's a, a, another discovery I, I made during COVID um, and as a kind of a good companion piece to, to Superhuman and the work you do. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the work of Byron Katie. She's a, a, an amazing uh, a, a writer and thinker, and uh, she's done a lot of work with Oprah. And um, she talks about like asking questions, like uh, like when you start to go down that rabbit hole, like what is real, like, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, again, is it the end of the world? No, I mean, for all we know, the Earth's gonna last like another. 500,000 more years. I don't know. We're not, we're not going to be here for it. So it, but the point is it's not the end of the world. It may feel like it, but we have to really um, make a check in our mind of like, you know, what's real and what's not. And moreover, what do we want to be real? If we want peace on earth, well, the first thing we can do is, you know, think about it. <laughs> yeah. Create the, that, the reality that we want. I love it. And it sounds uh, sort of. No, it's not. It's yeah, not but, but that's the thing. These sound like concepts. But what we did in the film is to show that's what's different about this film is like we demonstrate how what you think is. Uh, that's what I have not seen any film actually do that. I, I think you agree that it's not theory anymore. It's like, here's the science. Here's the experiment. So when you say your mind is shifting in that frequency, here's the color, here's the frequency. And so, and also you guys, um, Naomi's studio is plastered, plastered with images. Uh, remember? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. so, I, so what I was at Yes. First, uh, it's actually, there's a clip in the film about that, which tells me like she's got, amazing like every inch of the wall is covered with incredible imagery like whether it's from posters from films you've been in or what you're aspiring to do or to get uh you know the car and this and that and it's it's incredible uh i think it's in that next clip i'm gonna try to show it i, I think i pulled it up correctly uh but just to show you that she surrounds herself she doesn't naomi is somebody who doesn't just talk like like she says it and she does it so she believes that the vision works so she goes out and like surrounds herself with that visual every day of her life. And so that's why I think this is incredible. And I think that's why you are incredibly like so precise with your mind because you actually do it. So let's see if I can get that clip to go now. Sorry, but okay. your, your reaction yeah. is priceless. Uh, this was after the after we've done a few experiments. So, so let's take a look this time. World of acting being able mm. to turn it on like that is really impressive because I've run this uh, various iterations of the software on hundreds of people, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I've never seen someone be able to turn it on and turn it off, mm. uh, you know, by going to there, wherever there is. Uh, so, I mean, it's like when you're playing make believe, you yeah. know, and so you're, you're a perfect playing house, house, and I'm the mom, <laughs> and you're the dad, and you go there. <laughs> It reminds me of 
that expression, when it rains, it pours. It's no wonder that like when things are going well, they go really, really well or vice versa. Like I, those times when you, you know, I booked two national commercials and got a boyfriend all in one week. It's like, well, yeah, I'm putting something out there. I'm, fo I'm fixating on the positive. I'm so interesting, you know, I mean, we have so much power. We have the power to affect change in our lives. So why not choose the positive since we have a choice? Yeah. Did this help you kind of see how your mind can go either way in a split second? Yes. And so how your brain is registering? It's like when in doubt, if you get the choice, which because we have the choice, go to Jamaica. You heard it right. When you have the choice, go to Jamaica. <laughs> you went to Jamaica in yes. your mind in split second, you guys. I hope you mm -hmm. are learning from this incredible lady who's gorgeous, yeah. by the way, and your energy is incredible. If there are any questions, let's take them right now. Otherwise, we're going to sign off pretty soon. So, Michael, is there anybody? I think I saw something for Naomi real quick. We did uh, in the in the YouTube chat. Someone wanted to know, Naomi, did you ever have any other additional mind training before this? Hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, informally. Um, so this is kind of personal, but um, I was raised in Christian Science, which is uh, all about mind over matter, which is exactly this. Um, uh, I don't want to um, uh, do the religion uh, injustice by trying to sum it up in five seconds. But um, the thought is that um, uh, that uh, God is good and God is love and we are God and we are love and um, and that there's no room for uh, error or if God is all, then there's no room for, um, for uh, 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 error. And the, the material is, um, is, is actually unreal and temporal. Okay, I know I probably just lost a bunch of people because they're like, whoa, she just got like became a Jesus freak over like out of nowhere. And that's really not the point. The point is that for a, a, since, you know, a, I was a little girl in Sunday school, I sort of learned uh, when, when I had um, an owie, I would go, I would think, you know, okay, I can either focus on the, the pain and fixate on it, or I can think, okay, wait a minute, breathe through it. Is it real? No. Well, it sure looks like it. But, um, um, you know, again, God is good. God, God, we are love. Like I start, you know, and it's like to this day, even though I am, I'm not religious and I don't, you know, practice that in a, in a, um, a formal way at all. I still, to this day, if I drink too much and I wake up in the morning and I'm like, have a little, a little, fu little fuzzy, like a, you know, wannabe hangover, I literally will decide. I will go, okay, I can either let myself really go there and, and, and suffer today, or I can, um, or I can choose to like re remember that this is actually not real. Like I'm actually fine. I'm actually healthy. I'm actually good. And and I'll tell you what, it goes away like that. Like that's how powerful we are. Just the same way I was able to turn that that the the screen from red to blue. I can go. You know what? Mm -mm, not today. Yeah. I'm going to feel good today. And I think that's something we have to do. I mean, it's just like I said, like, if you got the choice, go to Jamaica. Like it, ta it takes as much energy to, um, to see the glass half empty as it does half full. So why wouldn't you see it half full? Like it's, 
it's it, it's such a much more pleasant way to be. Absolutely. You know, I mean, when I think about those la those first few like first months of COVID, w was crazy. Like I was. I was going to kill myself. Like, <laughs> I mean, that sounds like, I know now I'm going to get a bunch of phone calls, but um, I mean, I was really, I was not doing so well. And honestly, I, nothing's changed. Like, honestly, we're still under lockdown. I still haven't had a hug. I, um, <laughs> I, 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 I still like, like it, technically it, we're no different than we were in March. But my brain changed. And all of a sudden, I started to think, oh, how nice. Everything's kind of slowed down. Like, we're all of a sudden, I have time to, you know, work on that one woman show that, that was, you know, I, I was trying to get done before, but, you know, I had so many other distractions. Or, you know, now all of a sudden, um, instead of fighting in traffic uh, to to go to my yoga, for example, I'll take a nice bike ride, feel the, the wind in my hair, the sun on my skin. Like all of a sudden, it's just a matter of like changing your mind. Absolutely, that's exactly so you change guys. our mind. The, your reality, your yeah. If we can change our mind, we can change the world. The truly. experience, yeah. So, you guys, you just heard it directly from someone else other than me because I'm always saying that. So, thank you <laughs> for for saying it so yep. eloquently and demonstrating it. I mean, you know, so brilliantly in the film and living it yourself, especially with what's happening right now, you guys. That's all that it takes, and also. Uh, because um, if you are thinking like this is the end of the world and whatever, uh, it's also not only that you feel horrible, but it's not helping you also make decisions because we're having to readjust our life. You know, we're having to readjust, I don't know, like school and work and this and that. And so the decisions are going to be based on fear. So they're going to be bad decisions. So Whereas if you do a little bit of this work, it just at least puts you back in that new perspective of like, okay, okay, nothing happened yet. I'm still safe. I'm fine. Everything's okay. And from that place, you can create uh, and make much, much better decisions. So thank you for saying that. That's you know, incredible. Thank, of course, I, you know, I, I really, I am a good example in um, that, <laughs> and this has nothing to do with you know my like upgrade bringing in christian science or whatnot but like from a very young age i knew what i wanted to be when i grew up like i never ever ever deviated i was going to be an actress forever and um and i i had some success as a very young young girl i was you know i mean it's all relative, but in Denver, Colorado, where there wasn't a whole lot of, um, you know, film and television work, I, I managed to get it. Like I was, you know, I did Father Dolly Mysteries and um, regional commercials and pretty much anything that came through Colorado, I, I muscled my way into. Um, that said, so, I mean, at the age of 15, I got my SAG card and <laughs> While that is normally a major feat, you know, that's like the beginning. Unfortunately for me at the time in Denver, it meant it meant no more work. <laughs> like you'll never hear from me again. Um, until I, you know, then when I moved to Hollywood, I really, well, I struggled. I struggled for a very long time. In fact, I went from age 15 with, you know, my, my new SAG car till 37 that's 22 wow. years of of not like of basically paying dues and yet still not able to use sag insurance i, I mean i still couldn't go to the doctor i just wasn't being cast in a um a traditional sense now that said, I know for a fact, even my own mother could, who couldn't be a bigger fan, even she was like, how long are you gonna give this? Like, honestly, you're 37 years old and you're, <laughs> you're, you're just like you were when you were 15. You were like, nope, I'm gonna be an actress. But I saw it. I saw what I swear no one else did. I 
knew there was nothing else for me. Like there was, and there was really nothing else that I was more sure about in my life. Like wow. there was, I, 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 I couldn't tell you whether I'd get married or have a family or any of those things. And guess what? I haven't done any of those things because <laughs> I haven't seen it. But I always knew I would be an actress. And I oh, I always knew like at, at some point it would happen for me. I mean, I took my sweet time making it happen. Mm-hmm. I can't unfortunately control the timeline, but um, y- you know, I, 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 I think it's like that, um, what do they say? Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. Like I, I saw it. I never ever deviated from it. And, you know, it's pretty common in Hollywood to take a long time. I mean, of course, once in a while, people are discovered overnight. But I think it was just part of the process. And you pr- and now you're a brilliant actress, my dear, taking on roles that are extremely challenging that a lot of actresses I, I know could never pull off. So, uh, so, <laughs> so you did it. And it doesn't matter the time. Who cares? You saw it and it happened. So I think it's extraordinary. You're amazing. I'm so happy that you are in my film. Thank you. It's our film. Um, Thank you for doing this and being an example of, um, of what it's like to live what you believe in, which is use your mind and your consciousness in your craft. So as an actress, but also in your daily life, like we just said, dealing with the COVID, dealing with whatever challenges. And so I just feel like you are perfect in the film, perfect for us, a perfect friend. I love you. And I'm giving you a virtual hug. You said you're not getting hugs. We're all giving you a virtual hug. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should see all the love notes trickling, like love, love, love her, love her, love her. So Aww. thank you so much for, for doing this. Well, I will, you know, right back at you, uh, projection. Um, <laughs> you are perfect yourself. Thank you for taking um, y- your work, um, not just as a consciousness expert, but as a filmmaker, let's face it, you can choose any subject. You know what I mean? If you wanted to shoot a movie about, you know, shoot them up, <laughs> you name it, you could, but, y- and people do, let's face it. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people have made a lot of money doing it. But um, the fact is, we do have a responsibility on what we put out into the world. And I'm, again, I don't just sign up for any old reality television. Um, this is something I do feel very passionate and, uh, and it speaks to me. It's, um, it's authentic to who I am and I'm proud of it. And I stand by your message and thank you for um, putting out such a, a perfect movie that I just, I hope everyone sees. I think we'd live in a better world if they did. I hope so too. Yeah, I couldn't do any other films than these types of films as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) So anyway, you guys, please watch Naomi in the film. It is superhuman, the invisible made visible. It's showing everywhere like iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, Vimeo. Just go to superhumanfilm.com and all the information is there. Um, you know, where you can see it. Also, we have workshops teaching this kind of stuff for people who want to get into it. But otherwise, superhumanfilm.com and see the beautiful Naomi and uh, other cast members Mm -hmm. and incredible, mind-blowing experiments on mind over matter and the power of the consciousness, the power of you (laughs) to create your reality. Naomi, thank Mm -hmm. you so much for doing this. Lots Thank of you. you. The Lots power of, of all of us. We exactly. can all do it. Exactly. It's not, I'm not just the only, I'm not the pu- superhuman. We're all superhuman if we use it. Exactly. You got to use your powers, people. <laughs> exactly. So everybody, please let's join with Naomi and myself to be to feel empowered. Just watch that film. I'm telling you, you're going to come out of it feeling that you can change everything about your life. So uh, I hope you join us. Thank you so much 
for being with us. It was You're so welcome. Fun. I always have fun with you. I, I always have fun with you. So it's like I knew this was going to be a blast. Uh, so I feel you know. like we're on like an infomercial or something, but yeah. I swear I truly believe this. Like I feel like we're on like QVC. And we're yeah, like, right? What? Why? Why? And you get this? You get that? I'll throw in some ginkgo knives. Yeah. It's and, and it's like I really, yeah. And uh, wait, but there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, but it's true. It's like, you know, because we want to. But there's more. We have eternal, everlasting. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, this was a blast. Thank you so much. You guys, thank you for joining in. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Lots of love to all of yes. you. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Bye, honey. Bye.